Today we have Sergeant John Varley of the Oxford Police Department joining us. Thank you so much for being here. No problem. Now, a lot of students are about to leave for spring break, and as they pack their bags, what are some things they should consider when locking up to protect their houses from intrusion? Uh, they should always have somebody who goes around after everybody's gone and make sure that all the windows and doors are locked. Um, another thing they can do is to sign up for a vacant house check, which um, has an officer come by at different hours, different times of the day, and they'll check the residence to make sure that it hasn't been broken into or anything like that. And how long have you been doing that program? Uh, we've been doing that program since the 80s. Oh, um, wow. But it's actually gotten more popular lately. And so once students do register, what do you do if someone breaks into the house? Uh, obviously, we'll go in and we'll check the house to make sure that there's nobody in there. Um, and then we'll get, we'll, we will contact the property owner and the residents to let them know what has happened. Uh, and then we will ask them some preliminary questions over the phone and we can finish the investigation by having somebody from there come down and check and see if anything has been tamp tampered with or anything is missing from the residence. And I know over winter break the Miami student reported that six student houses were robbed. Do you feel, is this a reduction from previous years? Does this program, has it been effective? It's been effective. Um, the houses that were uh, broken into were not registered with us. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say that it can't happen to houses that are registered with us. But what we find is in the areas where we have a lot of vacant house checks, they tend to stay away from those areas because they do know uh, that they see police cruisers in the area and police officers out on foot in the area quite a bit. And there's no real set time that they can say that we will or will not be there. We will stop by as our shift permits and calls permit. So there's really no set time that we'll be there. We could show up at two in the morning or we could show up at two in the afternoon. It, it all depends. And aside from not registering for the vacant house checks, what are some common mistakes you see when students leave? A lot of things what we'll see is uh, they'll leave valuables uh, still in plain view from the windows in the house. Uh, things like Xboxes, video game systems, computers, that kind of stuff. Stuff that's easy to take, easy to carry off, and easy to conceal and hide. So you would suggest hiding those valuables? If you're going to be leaving for spring break or winter break or that type of thing, I would suggest taking it with you uh, if you can. If you, or if you can't because you're going on spring break to Florida or Mexico or wherever, I would recommend if somebody you know is not going or unable to go, uh, move your stuff to their residence. If that can't be done, then I would recommend hiding it so it can't be seen from the windows. And is this service provided for all Oxford residents or just students? It's for all Oxford residents. Um, now, you hold a new position with the police department. Can you tell us a little bit about how your work has changed? Yeah, for my, well, I've been here at Oxford for 17 years. And for 16 and a half of those years, I've been on night shift, and most of that was on nights and weekends. So you get used to how things are run and how what things happen and what's normal and what's not normal during those hours. Uh, day shift for me is a new thing. It's a little different. Um, so I'm still getting used to that a little bit. Can you walk us through maybe a typical day? Uh, well, now that I'm also, in addition to being a patrol sergeant, I'm a public information officer. Uh, so that also entails that if anything happens, I also talk to news media, including t um, television channels, newspapers, that kind of thing, uh, in addition to running what the patrolmen do and their assignments for the day. Um, all right. Well, I believe that we are out of time. So thank you so much for joining us, though. You're welcome. Anytime. This month's Sports Illustrated has people talking. After the break, we'll show you what they're saying and how it has affected the community. I am Joan Rivers with an important announcement. Getting old is horrible, okay? Horrible. You're not old. I mean, you're I'm older, old. but you're not old. You want to see old. Oh, God. Yes. Grow up, for goodness sakes. The last man to hit on me was an undertaker. I know where you I know, I, I don't want to talk about that. Well, this you're going to have to talk about it. It's the future. It's coming right at us. And I'm not worried about dying. It's getting there. I mean, 
Heaven is going to be fabulous. It's going to be a giant shopping mall, and there's going to be 20% off on everything except for me, 44. You know, you're doing jokes, and yes. I'm just not ready. Well, you have to be ready. You have to listen to me. Look, the things to discuss, they're going to be my needs, they're going to be my wants. Uh, you know, Mom, I, I just, I don't want to hear this. Oh, I just don't want to hear this. La, 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 la. Don't give me la, no, la, la, no, la, no, la, la. I don't, I can't. Talk I can't do this. to your family about uh -uh. aging, even no. if they're not ready to listen. Mm -mm. Listen to me. Listen to me. For the first time? Yes, for the first time. No matter who you are, it's not easy talking about aging. For help, go to voa.org slash talk. A message from Volunteers of America. Hi, and welcome back to Oxford Week in Review. I'm Catherine Buck. And I'm Molly Shanks. Springtime brings a lot of things to look forward to, but for guys, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue is always a highlight. But does the issue misrepresent female athletes? Our own Ellie Gonzo takes a look. The moment that men around the world have been anxiously awaiting all year has finally arrived. We all know what magazine is flying off the shelves this week, the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. And boys just can't wait to get a peek. Since 1964, the swimsuit issue has been released once every spring and has become Sports Illustrated's most famed and profitable publication. However, some people are offended by its message, content, and portrayal of women. Given the increasing acceptance of female athletics, how do female athletes feel about the swimsuit issue? I'm very proud of the fact that I am a female athlete, and I think when issues like the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition come out, it is a little bit belittling. It kind of plays into a stereotype of women, and it doesn't show how much they work hard at what they do, especially athletes. Despite some reservations, the reality is the swimsuit edition isn't going away anytime soon. Dr. Helene Alessio has accepted the reality and even recognizes some merit to the magazine. I think over the past 10 years, I think if anything, women have been in some ways advantaged uh, because of this. Is it, is it uh, sexist? Is it demeaning in that way where it's really just looking at one part of the person and not the whole picture, I would say yes. But I guess over the years, I've become to realize that a lot of women, for a lot of women, this is a career starter for them. Sports Illustrated, geared for athletics, has over three and a half million subscribers. The swimsuit issue features primarily swimsuit models, but a few female athletes typically pose as well. This year's issue includes a spread where three female athletes pose in the nude with simply body paint as their bathing suits. U.S. national soccer player Alex Morgan says she was happy to be part of the experience, but other readers are offended. No, I don't think it'll go away, but I think it is good that there's a dialogue going on where men and women are having a say about whether this is acceptable now in our society, and I think it's good to keep that dialogue going and hopefully eventually these kind of these kind of magazines won't be as popular. One thing's for sure, the vast majority of the Swimsuit Edition supporters are males. Guys are attracted to females, and um, I don't really think it, it's offensive if people want to put it out there and actually pose for that, then I'm, you're going to get an audience either way. The debate over whether the Sports Illustrated issue still resonates with readers is one that may continue for many years. It is a shame in a way that it doesn't celebrate the work that the female athletes do on the court or in their sport venue. What gets more notoriety or more notice is how they look in a swimsuit. Reporting for Oxford Week in Review, I'm Ellie Gonzo. Three Miami Farmer School business students will soon see their entrepreneurship project hit the market. Seniors Gina DiNardo, Benjamin Rasco, and Ryan Debro beat eight other teams with their plan for a durable, eco-friendly construction fence. JDM Properties of Pittsburgh plans to release the product, called Eco Fencing, later this year. In Brazil, it's carnival, and hundreds of thousands have packed the streets of Rio. 
Despite the financial troubles playing out in other parts of the world, it seems that many are willing to shell out cash to take part. CNN Shasta Darlington looks at the high prices and whether they'll scare people away from this upcoming World Cup. Unbridled excess everywhere you look. With colorful costumes, gyrating dancers and three-story floats, these parades burst onto the Samba Drome. It seems nothing can put a damper on Rio de Janeiro's raucous carnival. Not even a financial crisis in Europe and a protracted slump in America. What kind of an impact is this? We asked the city's tourism chief if he was worried. There is no crisis for carnival. Carnival is the biggest uh, 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 event in the world. But he added that the city is working on packages that will be affordable to foreigners. This year's celebration attracted a record number of tourists, 850,000. But most of them domestic travelers. Only 250,000 visitors came from abroad. And apartments? And many we spoke with, like this Norwegian author, were shocked by the high prices. Oh yeah, it's nearly as expensive as Norway, which is the most expensive country in the world. <laughs> a cramped studio apartment for her carnival holiday cost $3,500. Tourists complained about everything from fresh coconuts at Foray Ice, or $2.50, to sky-high hotel prices, and tickets for the Samba Drome, where even the cheapest seats cost $150. Um, you may have but this group of friends from New York and California said they took it in stride. I think for a beachfront property, especially on you know Copacabana Beach, uh, you expect prices to be pretty expensive. Almost everyone we talked to said not even the high prices would keep people away when Brazil hosts the World Cup in two years' time. <laughs> We'll be back, said this Argentine tourist. We haven't had a World Cup in Latin America for a long time. It doesn't matter how much we have to pay. And Rio knows how to take advantage of these big events. While the parades are undeniably lavish, they definitely pay off. In Rio de Janeiro alone, Carnival this year is going to generate more than $600 million in revenues. Rio is betting the 2014 World Cup and the Olympic Games two years later will make the party last a lot longer. Shasta Darlington, CNN, Rio de Janeiro. When most Americans think of Ohio, they think Buckeyes and Space Cadets. But there's another attraction that's gaining attention, and it's right here in Butler County. I take a closer look. Where can you go to experience one of America's three sculpture parks? A 30-minute drive from Oxford that boasts 265 green acres of hiking trails, paved paths, and 60 outdoor art monuments? Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park, located just outside of downtown Hamilton, is celebrating its 15th year of operation this April. The unique vicinity has a strong tie to Miami, as its owner and founder, Harry Wilkes, was a graduate in 1948. So where did he get the idea to create, at the time, the country's first sculpture park? So I always had in my mind that these big, giant sculptures in front of skyscrapers in the different cities shouldn't really be downtown in these large cities. They should be out with nature, out in the country. Wilkes says that the land is owned by an undisclosed non-for-profit charity, of which the $8 admission charge supports. But it's not just outdoor art. I'm standing inside the Museum of Ancient Sculptures, which Mr. Wilkes said will put it one step closer to a world first. The only place in the world where you have a complete history of sculpture, right here in one location. That feat is still in the works, as the 80 pieces housed in the indoor museum represent ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, and the Byzantine Empire. The only time period you won't find quite yet is the Renaissance, and once those pieces are in place, the museum and park will truly be in a league of its own. 
As something so novel and so close to our backyard, this still may be the first time you've ever even heard of Pyramid Hill. So how does Wilkes get the word out there? The main way is through programs, a program like this one that we're doing today. The word gets around by word of mouth. Through its popularity as a wedding site, its annual Earth Day celebration, and through television spots like this, perhaps Pyramid Hill will eventually no longer be considered the hidden gem of Southwest Ohio. Reporting for Oxford Week in Review, I'm Katherine Beck. And Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park is open year-round from 8 until 5. Well, those sculptures look beautiful. I'll have to make a trip soon. Miami University has just released the name of this year's commencement speaker. Two-time Academy Award winner A.R. Rahman is known for his multi-award compositions in the famous film Slumdog Millionaire. He was chosen for his inspiration and work around the world. We leave you with his last song in his hit movie. I'm Molly Shanks. And I'm Catherine Butt. Thanks for joining us on the Oxford Week in Review.